Good morning. This is December 3rd, Thursday, and today's devotion is entitled, Not by Might, Nor by Power. This is 1 Corinthians 2.4. My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. If in preaching the gospel you substitute your knowledge of the way of salvation for confidence in the power of the gospel, you hinder people from getting to the reality of salvation. Take care to see, while you proclaim your knowledge of the way of salvation, that you yourself are rooted and grounded by faith in God, not in your experience, but by faith in what God has done. Never rely on the clearness of your presentation, but as you give your explanation, make sure that you're, you are relying on the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what drew us in. We had no power to create that, that conviction. It was, it was brought about by the wooing of the Holy Spirit. Rely on the certainty of God's redemptive power, and he will create his own life in people. In other words, as we're witnessing, don't rely on your ability. Rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. He'll make it happen. Once you are rooted in reality, nothing can shake you. If your faith is in emotions or experience, Anything that happens is likely to upset that faith. I call it roller coaster Christianity. We base our, our walk with Jesus on our emotions. He's awesome when we're way up here, but when we're down here, he's not the God we thought he was. And then he's awesome again, and then he's not. And he's awesome, and he's not. Don't base your walk with Jesus on your emotions. That's not how it works. We base it on our faith in God's ability to redeem us. Base your faith on, faith on that. And as you are eternally secure as God himself, if we can do that. If we base our faith on God, we are indeed eternally secure, not on ourselves. Once you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll never be moved again. In other words, you'll never think that you're all that. You'll always go back to God. That is the meaning of sanctification. God disproves of our human efforts to cling to the concept that, th that sanctification is merely an experience. It is an experience, but it's not merely, merely an experience. While forgetting that even our sanctification must also be sanctified. So our experience of sanctification has got to be given back to God. That's what sanctification means, to be consecrated back to God. So even our experience in sanctification entirely needs to be sanctified back to God. If you want to see proof of that, read John 17. It's the priestly prayer of Jesus Christ for us in the garden just before he dies. He said, I sanctify myself. That's pretty amazing. So even our sanctification moment, we have to give it back to God in recognition that he did that, not us. I must deliberately give my sanctified life to God for his service so that he can use me as his hands and his feet. And my challenge today is to ask ourselves, are we lock, stock, and barrel, everything, consecrated to God? Is everything we do given over to him? Every bit of our lives. There, there's no uh, no spot that's hidden. And I, I tell people this a lot when I challenge them on sanctification. I ask them to picture your life as a home, a house. Does God have all the keys to every door? Every single door in that house. Does he have the key to every single door? That means even the drawers on your desk. Does he have that key? Does he have all the keys? Can he come into your life and look into every little nook and cranny? Is it, are, are we that given over to him? Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you challenge us to this level of relationship. I wish that all of us, Lord, that are married could see the power that's involved with a consecrated marriage. So, Father, I pray that we would give ourselves over to you 100%. Looking unto you, the author and finisher of our lives, to be able to do these things that you call us to. Be with us, I pray, and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.